All right, how's everybody doing today? This is Mr. Muscarella coming at you. In today's video, we're taking a look at the Law of Signs, the ambiguous case. And for this video, we're only going to determine the number of triangles. Now, when you see determine the number of triangles possible with the given information, what you've got to do is think to yourself, self, I've got to show that there are zero, one, or two triangles. You don't have to solve the triangles. Just go ahead and determine if there's zero, one, or two. How do we do that? Well, we use our buddy here, Law of Signs. Now, there are two different versions of the formula depending on which proportions you want to use. They're the same thing, but for this video, we are going to use the second proportional setup. It'll help make our algebra a little bit easier and less steps. But first, we've got to get our calculator set up. So first thing I want you to do in your graphing calculator is go ahead and set your decimal places to the tenths place and set your mode to degree. Second thing, you've got to know how to get to the degree symbol and to do that you simply hit the second key along with the apps key. That will get you into the angle menu. Now if you have a regular TI-83 not a TI-83 Silver Edition or 83 Plus, but a regular TI-83, you don't have an Apps button. What you'll have to do is hit the Matrix button instead of the Apps button. So you would still hit Second, but then you hit the Matrix button. So now that we've got our calculator set up and we know how to find a degree symbol, let's take a look at some old stuff from classes past. The sum of three interior angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. Yeah, I know you remember that from geometry. And here's one other piece from geometry I bet you remember. Supplementary angles have a sum of 180 degrees. So those are two key pieces from geometry that you're going to have to remember. Now there's going to be a third thing you're going to have to remember, and that's that the domain restriction for arc sine or inverse sine is going to be between negative 1 and 1. So when you see these symbols, arc sine of blop, that blop, whatever is in that blop, that piece has got to be between negative 1 and 1. So that's some of the old stuff we're going to have to pull into account here and take into our little brain and make sure we remember as we work through some of these problems. But enough of that. Let's go ahead and take a look at example number one. So here we are. We've got to determine the number of triangles possible with the given information. Now, A is 10, B is 6, and the measure of angle A equals 30 degrees. And a lot of times in textbooks, the lowercase letters will represent the side length. Now, this is a technique that I like to use to set this up. There's a couple other ones out there that involve you finding the height and working with a certain formula, but I like to use logic to kind of work through this. So what I do first is I make my little chart and I figure out, okay, I write down the given information at 30 degrees for the measure of angle A. Now the piece that I do next, after I do that, I'm going to go ahead and find the measure of angle B. And to do that, we're going to use our law of sines formula. So I'm going to substitute in the given values that I have. As I go through the arithmetic and I go through the algebra and use my calculator to help me solve this, I come up with a value for B to be 17.5 degrees. Now once I know the measure of angle B is 17.5, I can use a triangle sum theorem to figure out the measure of angle C, which would be 132.5 degrees. But now here's the other piece that I've got to do. I've got to take a look at another possibility for the measure of angle B. And to do that, I'm going to find the supplement to the angle that I just found for angle B. So I end up with 162.5 degrees for my other possibility for the measure of angle B. Now, so when I analyze case two and I add up the 30 degrees and 162.5 degrees, that's already more than 180 degrees. All right, and since that sum is more than 180 degrees, I don't have a second triangle. I've only got one possible triangle for this situation. So the number of triangles possible in this situation is just one. Now let's take a look at example 1b. Same kind of idea. But this time we've got A is 5, B is 10, and the measure of angle A is still 30 degrees. So again, from here, we'll go ahead and we'll take our time, we'll set everything up, and this is pretty, pretty straightforward. I think you guys will be able to zip through this really quickly. 
we'll go ahead and we'll substitute everything in and we'll figure out the value of angle B. And the measure of angle B ends up being 53.1 degrees. So once I know angle B is 53.1, I use the triangle sum theorem to figure out the measure of angle C is 96.9 .9 degrees. But remember, we've got to test and find a possible case two. So if I find the supplement to angle B, I end up with 126.9 degrees. Once I know the measure of angle B is also a possibility of 126.9 degrees, I can use my triangle sum theorem for case two to determine that my measure of my other angle C could be 23.1 degrees. So that means in this particular situation, I not only have one triangle, I have two possible triangles. Now we've done an example with one triangle, we've done an example of two triangles, so you know the next example I'm going to show you how to find one where your possibility is no triangles. All right, And again this is going to be very straightforward with your graphing calculator helping you out. So here we are, we've got all this information. Go ahead and hit pause and what I want you to do is show your work come back and check your answers and let's see if we get some of the same stuff. Alright, so how did your work look so far? We're good. Then when you hit all that calculator button stuff, you end up with this looking thing like you get this domain error like what is up with that? So what you gotta, when you take a look at this, you get this error thing going on and that's because remember this blop piece, that whole part that's in here, this 10 sine 30 degrees, all of that, that's gotta be between negative one and one and if we take a look at our domain restriction here for that knowing that it's between negative one and one well this five thirds that's definitely bigger than one because that would end up being a decimal of 1.6 and repeating forever and ever and ever so that's outside of our domain restriction therefore when we do that we get zero possible triangles and that's it we don't have to do anything else. We're done. No triangles finished. Now that's it for this video. Hopefully by now you can determine the number of possible triangles given certain information. And that information would be two sides and one angle because we are talking about the ambiguous case for the law of sides. All right, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch up with you later. Peace out.